everybody, let's talk about parallelism. Parallelism is this idea that we're going to keep things the same when they are joined by a conjunction or when they are a part of a list that's joined by a conjunction. So when you have things that are joined together, you can expect that they are going to be very, very similar to each other in structure. This whole idea is called parallelism. Now, you might already know the word parallel from vocabulary class. Things that are parallel, like parallel lines, go in the same direction, right? But they never touch each other, but they are, they're the same, same lines. And if something is happening at a parallel time, you have two things happening uh, at the same time, but in different locations, right? So um, in, in the year 2000, or maybe in the year 2010, uh, you were doing something on June 28th, and I was doing something on June 28th. We were both doing things at the same time, but in two different locations. And so that's the idea of things being parallel. But of course, we have this idea in the English grammatical structure as well. So let's take a look at parallelism together. I'm going to take a moment and share my screen with you. So let me get that ready. And in addition, let me get my slideshow ready. I'll change it around. Okay, here's parallelism, everybody. It's all about keeping things the same. Let's take a look at what I mean. We're going to play a little game. It's very easy, I promise you. You just need to tell me which one of the three is not like the other two. For example, writing, reading, Brandon. Okay. Which one is not the same? It's Brandon, right? We have writing and that's a verb. We have reading and that's a verb. And then we have Brandon and Brandon is not a verb. Brandon is a guy in the ESL office who helps coordinate everything. Definitely not a verb. How about these three? Here are three verbs, but which one is not the same? Thinking, right? Thinking is not the same. It's just, it's in a different tense. Write and read are in their base forms, but thinking has the ing ending, indicating that perhaps we're going to use it in a progressive or continuous sense, or maybe perhaps we put this in its gerund form. Speaking of gerund forms and infinitives, take a look at this list. Which one is not the same? Right. We have to write and to think in infinitive form, and we have reading in a gerund form, right? Okay, so you're getting very good at this. Take a look at one last example. Tell me which one is not the same. I hope you said to be a creative thinker. The first two, to write accurately, to read quickly, you can see the parallelism. You can see that they are the same. But tell me what exactly is happening here. Why are they the same? What elements do they have that make them the same? So we have the verb to write. <coughs> to write. And we have the verb to read. And then each verb is followed by an adverb, right? Good. But in that third example, we have to be, which is its own verb. That's fine. To write, to read, to be but rather than being followed by an adverb, we have to be followed by an object. To be what? To be a thinker. And that object even took an adjective, to be a creative thinker. An object, of course, is a noun, and a noun is very different from an adverb, so we have a different structure here. To write accurately and to read quickly, those two are parallel. But that third one is the odd duck, right? It's the odd one out. 
it's not the same as the other two. And this is exactly what we're going to be looking at with sentences in this video. We're always going to be trying to make sure all of our examples or all of our items, I should say, are in the same structure. Again, the keyword is the same structure. Take a look at all of these and you'll see the same structure. Two verbs. Two verbs plus nouns. Two adjectives. Two nouns plus adjectives that describe them. All of these have the same structure. So let's try to find it together in a sentence. Let's take a look at this sentence. The new restaurant has fresh food, reasonable prices, and service that is fast. Do you see the conjunction and? That's telling us something really important here. It's telling us that we're going to have two or more things that we are joining together. And it's also the signal that we need to check for parallelism. So let's find all the things that are joined together here. How many things are we joining together with and? Did you find three things? Good, fresh food, reasonable prices, and service that is fast. So let's take a closer look at those three things to see if they are parallel. Fresh food, reasonable prices, service that is fast. Can you see now that it's definitely not the same as the other two? Fresh food is an adjective plus the noun it's describing. Same with reasonable prices, adjective plus the noun. But service is including a that clause here, and that's a different structure. So how can we change that last one to be more like the first two? Did you say fast service? If you did, that's a really good choice here. It follows the same pattern that's set by the previous two items. Let's take another opportunity. Read this sentence. What is being joined together with the, conject with the conjunction and can you find those items? Good. Arguing in the lobby, talked during the movie, complained on the ride home. They all share a very similar structure. There's just one little difference, right? What's the structure? Verb plus prepositional phrase. Good. Verb plus prepositional phrase. Do you see it? We take a closer look at the verbs, however, we'll see that one is a little different from the others, not quite the same. Right, it's in a different tense. So how would we fix this? Argued, easy enough, right? Easy enough. Let's take a look at your book now. Take a moment to get to know parallelism in your book. You're going to see that it's a lot like what I've been talking to you about, of course. It's on pages 173 to 174, and then there's a practice. Please complete, check your understanding on page 174. Can you find the three mistakes? Stop the video now, do this exercise, come back and we'll talk about what you found. Did you stop the video? All right, let's take a look at your answers from check your understanding. All right, I went ahead and put the answers here on the screen. Take a moment and have a look. The item in bold was the item that was incorrect in the exercise. And I corrected it on the screen. Does it match what you have? If it doesn't match what you have and you're confused, feel free to text me and I'll help you understand. Now, take a look at the next page on page 175. We're going to read three short passages about Jasmine and we are going to locate all of the errors in parallelism. There are 
seven on the first page. And there are three more on page 176. Don't miss those. So we've got 10 to go over. Stop the video, read each of the paragraphs, find the errors, correct them, come back and take a look and see how you did. Stop the video. Do the work. All right, here are the answers. Number one, makes a sandwich, heats up some soup, scrambles some eggs. The one in bold, of course, is the one that's not correct. And I put the corrected version here on the screen for you. Number two, it's that second item in the list. It should be taking notes. How are you doing so far? Number three, the item in the list that should be corrected is the third one. And we need to put that in simple present form to match the other two. In the second paragraph, these are the answers here. Check your work in your book. Do you match? So far so good. Let's check out the last three. Here are the answers for eight, nine, and 10. Number 10 might've been tricky. Remember, uh, it's not just items in a list. Anytime we have a conjunction, whether it's holding two, th two things together or three things together or 30 things together, the items really should be parallel. They should be the same. So in number 10, you might've been looking for three things, but really we still need to use the same rule even when it's two things that are being held together by the conjunction. And that's what we have here. We have two items, attending classes and going out with their friends. If you want more practice, I have the answers for the following practices and tests in the PowerPoint slide that is available in the folder for this week in Blackboard. Please note, this was not the best designed set of questions in your book. So there are a number of them that are not written very well. And I would say that you don't need to do because it's not clear. It's not clear. So in practice number two, you can skip number seven. In test number one, skip number six and nine. And in test number two, skip number three. We could do much better sentences. I'll bet if we wrote some examples together, we'd be able to write some sentences that are much, much better. Okay, that's it. Hey, parallelism really isn't that hard, right? It's, it's pretty easy. Take some time, practice it, get good at it. It's really just developing um, some eagle eyes, some sharp eyes, um, and a good memory for when you use conjunctions. Keep in mind, it's, it's not just the conjunction or the commas, right? But you also need to think about the structure of how you're setting up each item and its meaning. I know that's a lot to do for a single sentence, but the more you do it, the easier it will become, right? We know this, All right? Thanks for tuning into my video on parallelism. I'll see you in class.